All right, so welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to negotiate higher salary during the pandemic. Uh, my name is Dr. Nancy Lee. I help people transition from worker bee to a product manager and business leader. And today I just want to give you a quick promise is that I'm going to show you how to advance your career with what you want and through negotiation and selling yourself and, and solving all the challenges so that you will not going to have any bad impression um, if you try to negotiate higher salary. And before we get started, I want all of you guys to take a break from your phone because most of you guys, I know you're all millennials. Um, so as millennials speaking right now, you're getting distracted by Instagram and TikTok. So I want you guys to put away all the distractions for 45 minutes because the specific strategy you're here, I'm sharing you today, you probably, you haven't heard about something like this before. So it's going to change how you see salary negotiation and how you start to get more as well. So pay close attention. And another reminder to all of you guys is that, so the way to build a strong brand is start sharing even before you get to that position. Same thing as if today you learn something new about standing up for yourself or negotiate or influence, I encourage everybody to share directly on Instagram or LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to tag me directly. So the, uh, the branding really comes in when people start to talk about your interests and more people realize that you are more interested in the leadership position, standing up for yourself, and gradually you're going to learn what's the best way to apply the strategy. During this talk, you're able to understand what I mean by here. Okay, so let me ask all of you guys a question today. So feel free to comment on the chat. So why you're here today, I have three reasons I guess you're here today was because maybe you're here, you're motivated to get a new job opportunity and you are low bought by employers. If one is you, press one in the chat. And the number two, the second reason you're here today was because you're afraid to ask for more and people may dislike you, but you hate being underpaid. If two is you, comment two on the chat. And number three, the third reason you're here today was because you feel like people underestimate your capabilities and you want to learn how to stand up for yourself. So I guess the three reasons you're here right now. So let me know, comment on the chat, one, two, three. If the fourth reason, which I didn't cover, please comment on the chat as well. Just tell me why you're here today. The reason I asked you all those questions was because I really want to serve this 45 minutes purposely to you, to your needs. So if you can tell me why you're here today so that I can tailor my talk directly to who you are, what kind of problems you're trying to solve. Okay, so when you comment, make sure you comment directly to everyone so that everybody can see your comment. So I see comment coming in right away. That's awesome. Um, and so is... Martina, uh, Martina says three, and Lexi's two and three, two, two, two. I see many two and three, two and three. That's great. Very, very good. So if we see two or uh, three, um, they are, which means they are directly afraid to ask for more, or you feel like people underestimate your capabilities and you want to learn to stand up for yourself. Okay, great. I see most of you guys are two or three. Yeah, yeah. In that case, I'm going to cover more regarding the emotional aspect and how to actually get paid more without leaving a bad impression. Um, something very quickly about uh, specifically who I am. So I am Dr. Nancy Lee. I am uh, a YouTuber. I'm also a director of product. I'm also a product management coach, focused on high efficiency. And on top of that, I'm also a negotiation expert. I'm an immigrant. I am actually the first person graduated from college in my family. And also the first like female engineers or like, any majority of the first in my family. Um, my Actually, my personal interest is ballroom dancing and my favorite uh, uh, TV show during pandemic is Mandalorian. So feel free to comment on the chat regarding introduce yourself as well. And let me quickly go through here about specifically who I am, how do I get started, why I'm teaching you. Um, actually, when I got started myself, 
And I was the youngest engineering PhD from Boston University, but I didn't really like my, uh, like my first job at all. Because my first job, to be honest, this is a picture of me working in the oil field as a like, systems engineer. I didn't have any like customer interaction. And when I found out that actually I was underpaid compared with my peers, all those uh, male coworkers, I felt very sad. And, and to be honest, and when I realized that companies, sometimes they purposely take advantage of me maybe because I didn't stand up for myself or because I look too young, so many different reasons. And they slow down the green card application process on purpose as well. And whenever I just try, try to go out interview for new positions and people always point out that, oh, you don't have it. And inside of me, I was like sitting behind the table was like, you really don't see the talent inside of me. And the frequent feedback from my managers and whoever always say that, oh, you did very well um, in terms of performance review, as lots of you guys right now are going through the performance review process, right? So people are thinking, well, you know what? You are too young. You did well, but you're just not good enough. This is totally a vacuum to me that, so you know that, I did well, but you never pay me well enough. And when I ask you, well, how can I improve? You ought to just say that you, I'm not good enough. To be honest, this is like, sounds like nightmare to me. Sounds like I had another tiger mom that have very high standard to me to always saying that you're not good enough. This is very, very confused. And what I decide to do is that, so if you cannot change the environment, you need to change yourself. It is true myself as an immigrant and also minority woman in the oil and gas industry and people may not fully respect me. It's very difficult for me to stand up for myself, but I can just not leave the, the control power up to other people. Is there anything I can do by myself? Then I start to learn what's the best way to negotiate a higher salary. So it turned out my first job actually was in a year into my new job. I asked for I asked for more salary, and actually I received fifteen percent more money, a fifteen percent right a raise in the second year. And on top of that, I also had the second highest bonus in my company. And during the pandemic, when I switched to new jobs, so I directly, I really want to get into the leadership position. Actually, I directly transitioned from individual contributor to director product in four years. And when I made the transition, um, my salary also went up by 40%. And during COVID, um, I got four offers, three offers of director product offer. So what the message I want to tell all of you guys is that there are room to improve this also more strategy and better strategy to get you where you are. So why well, I'm teaching you all those strategies today, um, just to be very honest with you guys, my long-term goal is to build 100 schools in China to teach kids from middle-income families entrepreneurship. This is speaking dearly to my heart was because I belong to one of those kids before, to be honest. I never had a family vocation until age of 20. My family just never want to spend their money beyond food and education. And to them, like going on vacations, the rich people are going to do. It's like luxury. Um, for a little while, to be honest, I felt like it's very difficult to admit that I was poor and came from nothing. Um, because everybody around me seemed to be very successful, very wealthy, especially in the U.S., but gradually I start to face it and start to understand that you cannot change where you're coming from, but you can change where are you going. And I started to embrace that, the fact that I came from nothing, but how can I start to improve myself? And a few years later, after I became director of product, it, guess what? I start to, to be proud of where I came from because the people who are richer than me now all work for me. So therefore, the message I want to deliver to all of you guys is that it doesn't matter where you came from, it matters where your future goal is and how would you be able to accelerate and reach your goal fast. Okay, so as you know, 
there is no way I can just go back to China immediately, build nonprofit for poor kids like me, like immediately because the US China relationship is pretty bad. Even if we have a new president, um, I, I, I still think the relationship is kind of bad, especially now the COVID is, is going on right now, right? So I cannot go back to build nonprofit immediately. However, I start to look around, is there any urgent problems and the needs I can solve right now, immediately? Guess what? I see something very interesting. So as a director of product at Cox and X uh, Verizon, X Shell Oil um, employees, I was the only female manager out of 100 people product management organization. And on top of that, when I look around, what about other like international professionals or immigrants? Are they in this like leadership position? Are they on the decision making table? Frequently, they are not. So that's why we're always underpaid. We didn't know how the salary structure was formed. We didn't know how to stand up for yourself. We're afraid we might lose our H-1B or any other visa sponsorship just because we didn't know what's the best strategy to execute. And on top of that, we didn't have a role model. So therefore I made a decision. What if I started to teach others because now I hire people for my own team. I have negotiated salary like 15%, 40% each time when I move around within in my company or jump ship. Let me start to teach you. So that's why I started to teach those kind of negotiation workshops for free. And as we are speaking right now, I have taught over 600 women how to negotiate. Actually, both men and women, I want to teach more women, but men always join my workshop regardless because they are very, very uh, uh, ambitious and aggressive in terms of um, getting paid more. So I taught 600 people so far. So my goal is to teach 1,000 people um, in, uh, in next year. Um, so please help me out if you know any nonprofit organization, they want to hear the same strategy as well. Okay, so therefore I start to make YouTube channel and actually today's special day, my YouTube channel broke 2000 subscribers. Um, feel free to take a screenshot of this page and there's a specific barcode you can scan later on. So my uh, YouTube channel has a lot of free content about different kinds of negotiation strategies and hopefully it's gonna help you down the road and also teach you how to get promoted as well. All right, so, in the summer, when I got into the director position was in four years, and actually I got promoted twice was in four years to become a director. So I started to teach people how to get promoted as a female minority. You can watch the YouTube live replay on my YouTube channel as well. All right, so today let's laser focus on how can we get the compensation we want together. What's the best strategy to move forward? And especially answer your questions. So two and three, how do not get pushed back and also do not leave a very bad impression, right? So let's get into strategies today. Here's first of all, when we talk about negotiation, don't you feel like, wow, this is kind of like aggressive, right? People will call me a bitch if I ask for too much. What if people don't like me, right? Don't you feel this way? But I want to show you the first mindset change. When you see negotiation, what about you immediately reflect in your mind saying that negotiation is influence? Yes, in real life and real work, negotiation is influence. There is a specific quote. I recommend all of you guys to write it down or take a screenshot. Actually, this one invented by myself by Dr. Nancy. Uh, I think it's very, very true. So people do not pay for what you deserve. They pay for the value you sell to them. Let me say it again. People do not pay for what you deserve. They pay for the value you sell to them. So let me elaborate a bit more here. So let me, why don't you guys put comment to answer this question? What do you think is negotiable? So what do you think is negotiable? And so come on the chat because in the next page, I have an answer for you. Then we can apply the framework to the things you want to negotiate. Okay, so uh, comment to the chat and reply all so that more people, everybody can see your comment. So I see Martina said pay and title and Lynn said project and Sunny said everything. Uh, Lisi said bonus and Jing Wen said position. Martina said, uh, oh, title I, I read already. 
a bell said everything compensation exactly negotiation if you see everything is a negotiable you open up so many doors let me brief get back to you so in my opinion everything is negotiable let me give you some something very tangible so that you can apply the framework right away everything list here is all negotiable including very very obviously pay salary sign on bonus or your annual bonus your green card i negotiate green card as well for my second employer with the first employer they intentionally delay my green card i learned the lesson so i applied the strategy to negotiate my green card with the second employer and you know what exit package exit package is more popular for someone who is in the leadership position in this case our directors or vp above position and if you're also in the senior level position you think about exit package exit package means usually like senior leadership position if somehow you are laid off or some some kind of reason leaving the company you can negotiate how much they're paying you before you even join the company so usually company can pay you like up to like i think some somebody received a year Within a year, I'm going to, if somehow a director or above level leaving my company, I'm giving you one year salary so that you don't work for my competitors or some terms against, hey, to be honest, I'm happy to get one year salary for some reason, I'm leaving my current company. I, I believe I can get offers way faster than a year. So that's an exit package people do not talk about. Equity is how much stock options you have, tuition, you know what? Something else about tuition, I want to remind you guys, there is another specific case study. Someone else already executed this, this before. For example, you're doing an MBA, right? Um, you can ask a company to pay for your MBA directly, right? Or part of your uh, like um, position or um, tuition. And on top of that, instead of paying you the, for example, the annual bonus, send the bonus directly to the school. In that case, you're, sav you're saving 30% of the tax pay directly to the school, you don't pay for tax. You, you know what I'm saying? There is a tax strategy behind 30% immediately, even if it's the same amount of money to the company. Everything is negotiable, okay? All right, post series A salary means if you join a startup and people are like, oh, we do not have money right now. It's okay, let's negotiate post series A salary. Once you raise funding, what's my new salary will be? As long as you promise me it's gonna be the market rate, I'm fine, right? Usually startup, when they get started, they don't really pay you well, but negotiate post salary, uh, a post series A salary, severance package. Anytime, here's the thing, tips to you guys. Anytime, as long as it's not your fault that company let you go, you can negotiate severance package. You can negotiate really good severance package as well legal contract, everything. To me, in day-to-day -day life, actually, I practice negotiation once per week just to brush up my skills. To me, in my opinions, like, who cleaned the dishes at home with your husband? Who cleaned the bathroom? You know, all those are negotiable in real life. On top of that, if you directly apply this to like small businesses, actually, I received 20% discount at Macy's without sale. Nothing was on sale. A full price item, I received 20% discount. And the crazy part is I also I also negotiate free croissant at the bakery store. Um, that wasn't that wasn't just for, for the purpose of taking advantage of them. I'm just trying to check it out how good I am. After I received the free croissant, I never negotiate in the bakery store anymore. It's all the crazy stuff. Um, yeah, and also buying properties. And of course, I, I myself I I bought a property during COVID. So Depends on your negotiation strategy. You can negotiate discount as well. Myself, oh, I have a video on my YouTube channel talking about how I negotiate 15% off a of macaroon as well. You guys should check out the video as well. Okay, so now you understand everything is negotiable, right? There's no glass ceiling for you anymore. Everything is negotiable. Okay, cool. Another mindset shift I want you to understand before I teach you all the strategy is that you are as good as others. What does this mean? So let me give you a real case study. This is coming from Stanford, okay? So the case study, what happened was they put people into this specific um, uh, two rooms, two groups. Group one, they said, you know what? We are directly going to negotiate on behalf of TJ Maxx, all right? But in the past, at TJ Maxx, so women, I yeah, love fashion. They're better negotiator. Usually they negotiate really good deal. In group two, in group two, both groups have men and women. In group two, 
they still negotiate on, on, on behalf of TJ Maxx, but there's something, they said something opposite. They said, you know what, in the past, men are very tough and they're never afraid of like uh, uh, having uh, uh, been pushed back by the vendors. So they usually are better negotiator, right? So they told two groups different things before they even go out to negotiate. Then they say, okay, everybody with this in mind, you go out to negotiate, do, do your best. So I want you to comment on the chat and guess who did better, is a man or woman? So comment on the chat, let me know what you think. Who did better? Um, I see same, okay. So Wei said the same, Shu said the same, Martina said the same, Lassie said the same, uh, Lin Jing said the same, Sunny said man, or Lassie said woman. Okay, great. Um, Kay said woman. Are you guys voting because you're a woman? You vote for woman, men vote for men. That's funny. Uh, so let me tell you the, the right answer to this. This is all based on Stanford research. Okay. So the answer is you are as good as others. For the first group, they said, oh, you know what? Women are better. They love fashion. Women did better. For the second group, they said men are tougher. Men in general did better in the past. Men did better. You know the difference? What triggered the difference was what they put in your mind. They already put a glass ceiling in, head of your, in your head. Before you even go out, they told you, women can do better, then you did better. They said, men can do better, or oh, the men did better. So that's a difference immediately. So therefore, I discourage any woman goes, oh, we felt it's like discourage everything, no. If you, if you know how to use the right strategy and you believe that you can do as well as men, you get the same result as them, okay? That's very important mind shift I want you to understand. If you put the wrong glass sitting in your head, you get worse result than others, regardless how hard you push. Now, let me teach you how to use the right negotiation framework. Okay, so here's something very interesting. They, within the negotiation framework, what I teach is very different from other people. There's a specific framework, four set framework in it is the right timing and build your rep reputation before you ask and research on market value and talk about your value as well. Let me walk you through this uh, specific negotiation framework and also give you specific examples how to do it. Okay, here's the thing. You need to build your credibility before you ask. Let's say right now, including myself, we're doing performance re review in the company, right? December, best time for performance review. Everybody's doing that, or most company, let's put it this way. Most company doing performance review. Now, next part, do you think you should ask right away as a negotiate, uh, as a performance review? Wrong. You need to socialize your achievement whenever it happens. Okay, do not wait until negotiation at the performance review. That was too late. You need to build your credibilities before that happens. Okay, so let me also quantify. Let me uh, let you know, what do I mean? Something you can share with others to let people know about your achievement. For example, product launch. Anytime you launch a new product. So I specialize in product management. So product launch is something very important. All the product managers need to talk about it. And engineering breakthrough. If you are data scientist, a data scientist and engineers, like all the breakthrough, you, you should let other people know. If have January had a breakthrough, let other people know. Or any kind of problem you have solved. And on top of that, if any customers send you a thank you note, forward to your boss right away. And, uh, and, and your boss is likely to forward it to his boss as well, because it will make him look good as well. So all of those, and on top of that, you should save it, not just forward it, you, you print it out, you save it. And at December performance review, you say, hey, if my customer send me a really nice letter, I print it out just in case you forgot about it, okay? You need to build your credibility even before you ask. Now, next part you need to build a personal brand before you ask. Okay, so let me ask you this question. What's your personal brand? How other people describe you? Do people describe you as someone who is a confident problem solver or leader? Or someone describe you as someone who is very 
nice team player, very good at crunching numbers, very good at behind the desk, getting job done. Let me ask you, what kind of reputation this kind of personal brand is going to get you paid more? Okay, so I, I challenge all of you guys try to think about what your personal brand. Personal brand is defined as more than what you think your personal brand is. It's also what other people describe you, your personal brand. Okay, so please comment on the chat. What is your personal brand? If you know, or, or put it this way, if you do not know, but at least what kind of personal brand you want to build. Okay, so comment on the chat. What's your personal brand? And encouraging you're saying the talk is encouraging yes yeah yeah talk talk is encouraging thank you grace uh please comment your personal brand put your personal brand in the chat um for okay pixel said innovation you mean innovative yeah sheen said problem solver Martina said reliable that's great that's all great personal brand creative grace has a very good one uh creative yes yeah exactly right so uh upbeating yes great and reliable jimwen said reliable leslie said proactive people connector that's great leslie that, that's very great great said but also positive all of those are a very good personal brand so i encourage all of you guys to pick understand your today's personal brand this where you are right now and pick the type of brand you want to either continue or get into right for example, your, if your currently your personal brand is creative, but in order to get promoted more or being perceived as a leader, you want to be someone who is very assertive as a woman, or you want to be perceived as someone who is very confident, or you want someone to say that, oh, she is a good puppy speaker. For example, I was known for I'm a good puppy speaker with my American coworkers, not just within like our, our own immigrant, just American coworkers knew that I'm a good puppy speaker, right? Very confident. And so set your, I'm gonna say current, current brand and figure out the future brand where you wanna go into and live through your future brand starting from today. Don't wait until you get there. That's a very important message I want to share with all of you guys. Don't wait and you can't you become a manager, then you start to learn how to lead. Learn to lead even if you're an individual contributor. Don't wait, you are like director level, then you learn how to negotiate. Don't wait until you're underpaid, then you learn how to negotiate. You should lead through the brand at the beginning so that you can accelerate your career. Okay, build your brand right now. Um, okay, so next part is research your market value. Okay, uh, market value is very straightforward, right? Let's say you want to jump ship to a new company or you don't want to jump ship, you want to stay in your current company, right? So you can still just trying to show others what your best like um, uh, market value. So at least you understand I underpaid or not, right? So you can Google figure it out. So one of my favorite a website is blind. It's called teamblind.com. And you guys can take a screenshot and go to blind. Uh, blind later on is the app. The website version is teamblind.com, right? Over there is all anonymous information about your salary. There's another website called Level FYI. Level FYI is mainly for fan companies, which is uh, Facebook, Apple, Google, Amazon, those kind of fan companies. But I think not everybody works for fan company, right? So therefore blind is, is, is a better and more inclusive website. So understand your market value. Now, let me show you as an example what I found out. What does this mean? Once you know how much can go, then you have a confidence to ask for more. Okay, let's say you are a product manager. So because here thing, um, I help people to become a product manager and I also help them to negotiate a higher salary. I know lots of people's salary. Okay, so the number I give you is a very legit number. As a product manager, people's salary in general is between 120 to 300 grand. That, which means your monthly salary is between 10 grand to 25 grand. Your sign-on bonus could vary between five grand to 100 grand. Those are individual contributors. 300 grand is more towards a fan company. Like the lower one, 120 is more non, just non-fan company, to be honest. And this doesn't include startup. Hey guys, startup can go really low. Startup can go like 60 grand, whatever. It's relatively very low, but give you lots of like equity. But who knows, maybe the equity could be the next Airbnb, you know, who just went public. So, so this is very difficult to 
estimate for for startup but in general the bulk number i give you is the the right one and if you want to know how much product managers get paid because specialists in product management check out my video on youtube you can just go to dr nan cd just any anywhere just google dr nan cd the top 10 result is on me just go to any of my videos and it will lead you to my either my website or my youtube channel just google dr nan cd you can watch this video how i broke down uh, how much people get paid and some of them getting paid like half a million as an individual contributor in google as well okay so Another part is when you go into the negotiation, you need to understand what's on the other side of the table. 80% of the battle was done before you conduct your negotiation in person. Okay, this research was on the other side of the table belongs to the 80%. The fact that you walk into negotiate, the rest is only 20%. But people always reverse. People always say, Nancy, what's the best strategy to ask for more on the spot on during the performance review with my manager? What the exact script I should use? Okay, it's not like that. It is totally wrong. The best way to do it is to research before you even walk into the negotiation room and sit on the table. Okay, so you need to do research regarding what's on the other side of the table. So what's your budget? What's a competition? You think you're doing well and you see your coworkers, seriously. So what do they value? Maybe you think you're very good building mathematical model, but they appreciate client interaction, driving revenue for companies. They appreciate something different. You also should understand what is negotiable. Okay, maybe something's fixed. The maybe let's say for lots of company, actually the base salary Relatively speaking, has less room to move, but they can move a lot more for sign on bonus, different kind of bonuses goes against. You need to research about what's negotiable, what's in the package, what's in the entire package, not just the money. Could be vacation time, could be other stuff, especially for women. You know what? Flexible working hour is very critical, especially if you want to raise your family. Maybe money is not important to you. I just want to be flexible, okay? That's part of package. And also, you also need to develop smart question to ask if you cannot find out all the answer. But usually, I will find out as much information as I can even before I walk into the room to do the real negotiation. Okay, now here is the 10, oh, sorry, eight negotiation tips. Uh, we do not have time to go through each of the tips. This, this lasts for like really long time. Hey guys, I have a six hour in-depth negotiation training, go through each of this. But today, let me share with you the number one. You need to understand this. It is illegal for HR to ask your current salary in Massachusetts. Research as a state. I think New York, New Jersey, California has the same rule. So anytime HR, HR likes to do this. They like to lowball you. So there's also oh, how much you're getting paid right now. Let's see. You tell them saying that in the phone, on the phone saying that it is illegal for people to ask me how much getting paid in Massachusetts. I don't want you to be to put you in the wrong spot. Okay, you say that right away, especially if you know your current salary is towards the lower end. It's all oh, you it's pretty low 60 grand, like it's an 80 grand. It's already pretty high, it's 20 grand higher than, than the old one. That's pretty good. No more to give them any more. Okay, so never tell them how much you're getting paid unless if you work for a fan company. Okay, you're already getting paid half a million dollars or 300 grand. Yeah, tell them. Tell them because you're already towards the higher end, just tell your competition how much you're getting paid. That's a special case. For any other case, you do not work for a fan company, you know that you're getting underpaid, tell them it is illegal for HR to ask your current salary in Massachusetts or any other state. Okay, now you need to package your value, right? Here, let me give you a real life example. My student, Annie, um, herself was a senior scientist working for startup in San Francisco and she received 40% raise. Let me give you the step-by-step -step framework we have used and how exactly uh, we make it happen. Okay, here thing, value examples. Okay, so what happened to Annie was that she got a low bar offer. Low bar offer means currently, let's say this is to protect her information to, for, the, for, the full, uh, for the full transparency. Let's say she's getting paid 100 grand. She's getting paid higher than this, to be honest. But let's say 100 grand, right? Uh, as, a senior, uh, as a senior material scientist. Her new offer is the same as her current salary, 100 grand. 
Why on earth, when you jump into a new company, you're getting paid the same amount of money? That's totally old, low bought offer. So Annie felt very undervalued. Okay, then what we did was that let's compare with your market value. And let's say material scientist in Bay Area is getting paid between 120 and 150 grand. It's clearly she can reach out to something higher, right? This is her market value. And the second part, uh, the third part she did was how can we do some internal research about what's on the, the other side of the table? We discovered what at the startup, the new company. She's jumping from one startup to the other startup, basically. So the new company she was about to join just raised $300 million. That's a lot of money. And they have super good life work balance. So that company, to be honest, they're working, they're taking every other Friday off, which means that life work balance is doing very well. So they are not short of money. They're treating the employer very well. Yeah, which means they have money on the table. They're ready to pay them. It means the, the budget is ready higher, right? And then uh, Annie started to package her value. What's the value you can sell to the employer? She discovered that in the specific startups and she had a unique contribution. She had experience working on 90% of the equipment. And on top of that, she also had experience leading a team. She also had so many PhD publications. All of them will truly appreciate what she has. So that's her value. So she started to pack her value and pitch her value to the HR. And she also uh, did this and she brought HR on her side. So the, the, the funny part was when I, when I helped her negotiate high salary is she told me exactly which are what the HR said and I told her how to respond back uh, going back and forth. So what we did was that we told HR that we really like your company. Can we work together, right? So what do you think the hiring manager wants? In the reality, HR always wants you to accept the offer, to be honest, because their compensation is linked to the fact that you are actually accepting the offer. They want, you to, they want to help you. So you need to show that you're on the same boat, Hey, I want to join this company, but you know what? I deserve more because ABC reason, the market value, your, your value, you pitch to the company. And then you bring the HR on your side saying that, hey, I, I just want to work with you. How, how can we work together? Um, just let me know. So what, what, what do you think the hiring managers think? Why do you think the hiring manager gave me such like low bar offer? Um, just bring her on your side. So eventually, we were able to get 40% raise, not just for the money power, hey guys, because I personally focus on career development as well. Money is one thing. Your growth is also sometimes more important than money in my personal opinion. And guess what? Any transition, not only the money wise, she transitioned from someone working for bike startup to a, sell, to a flying car company. That's cute. Hey guys, I think this is way cooler product to work on. Anytime you go out, you say, what do you work on at bikes? Or next time I get a new job, what do you work on? Back in the future type of car, you know? So it's a, it's a career progression for her, not just for the money. So knowing how to negotiate and pack your value is a key and do lots of research. 80% of battle happens before the battle actually starts. Okay. Um, another very quick example, just more real estate example. And for the for today's sake of time, I do want to leave time for Helen. For real estate example, I will just quickly go through this without going in, uh, in depth. So basically, this another student of mine to protect her information. Her name is Megan. Um, so real estate agent. Um, and here's the thing, right? So do not judge or miss. This is Massachusetts price. Massachusetts single family is 600 grand. If you live in San Francisco, please add one more zero to it. Do not laugh at the low price in Massachusetts. Okay, take it easy on us. So um, the original, the listing price of the, um, the, the house was 600 grand. It was sold for 700 grand. Oops. And oops, someone drew a line on my PowerPoint. That's interesting, but let's keep going. Um, and however, because she actually sold more, 100 grand higher than the original value, However, she can only get 1% of commission. The reason was because original was 3% in total and she, she has to give 2% to the seller's uh, agent. She only kept 1% for herself, which means through this entire process, high, like selling the property for 100 grand more, she only gets $7,000. She deserves to get paid more. So what she decided to do is that she understands, she understood her uh, 
original value, additional value to her client, 100 grand more, her, her, she asked for additional 1%, another 7,000. So her total value she brought her client is $93,000. On top of that, she also learned how to like build relationship and, and sell in the future, like relationship and deals with the client as, uh, as well. So at the end, she was able to get paid more. And on top of that, let me also share with you another like insider information. And this is just, again, pre uh, protect all the uh, situation, people's information, but this definitely happened to a friend of mine. Um, so somebody, let's say his name, Could I hear um, you a more? Yeah, uh, I think that uh, Nancy's uh, uh, network uh, connection is probably broken. Uh, so while Nancy is offline right now, uh, um, I believe that this is a very informative uh, presentation for everyone. So um, if it is possible, uh, could you, uh, I, we'd like to play a game with you. So if you, um, if you are interested, uh, please uh, scan the QR code in my back or uh, put in uh, what you learned today in the link that I shared in the chat. So really, um, okay, Nancy's back. Hi, Nancy, uh, you're on mute. Hey guys, sorry, my internet got cut off. So every 10, 45 PM, my internet cut off because my husband want me to go to bed. So that's a hint. <laughs> also, also shut down every time. Um, so let's, uh, can you make me host again so that I can represent? Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, let me see, I'm the co-host, but uh, um, can I? So I'm um, not? Jami, Jami, can you uh can you uh make Nancy the host? I don't seem to have the permission. Or Ziwen, let me let me ping them. Probably. Yeah, or you guys can enable me sharing screen again. Let's see. I don't have the access right now. I think maybe Jami she can. Yeah, maybe you guys can host. enable the screen share, at least. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, sorry guys. Yes. Yeah, um, let me see if I issue. Yeah, totally fine. Um let's see. Um I think that we don't have the access for now. Um is it possible that uh you share the slide with, with us and then we can present it? Yes, I can do that. I will put it in the chat. Okay. Sorry guys, technical issues. Yeah, totally. So um, thank you guys. Uh, thank you everyone for your uh, patience. Uh, I think that we, um, okay, got it. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I have your slide, I'll present here. Yeah, um, go to the slides with John, then we can continue to go to the next slides once you present. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. Um, Right. This one? Yeah, right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's John's example. So therefore, the, the message to all of you guys is that, so actually companies want you to negotiate. So next slide. All right. So the question I have for all of you guys is, uh, when do you think you should ask for a raise? When do you think you should ask for a raise? So comment on the chat. So when do you think you should come, uh, you should ask for a raise? Uh, performance review. Yeah, job board said performance review and ways that promotion when we have competing offer anytime. when it's the right time for promotion, 
right after a major accomplishment, suddenly said before the performance review. So here you think, um, during 101, hinted during 101, that's a, that's a very uh, uh, good answer. So they're saying, let me show you this negotiation uh, calendar in, uh, next slide. So the answer to this question is that there are several examples. When you jump ship to a new company and also when you switch to a new role in a current company or ask for raise before decision is made. Let me elaborate on ask for raise before decision is made. So let's move to the next slide, join the calendar. Okay, so this is the negotiation calendar. I also have a YouTube uh, channel and showing you how exactly to use the negotiation calendar. What do I mean by when before before decision was made. Okay, so as a hiring manager, I know how exactly decisions were made. Let's say performance review is in December, but do you know that for some companies, the decisions was made before December, before your performance review. It's likely, let's say the decision uh, was made in November, your manager and HR will start to talk about how do they distribute the the, uh, the bonus or the salary increase this year. The decision was usually made before the performance review. In the performance review, they, com they communicate with you, but the decision was made, let's say in November, all right? So in November, the number is locked down. So therefore in December, when you ask for more and it's likely you're not going to get what you wanted. But different companies have different calendar. So let's say the timing for, for this company, your current company, company is November and do performance review in uh, in December. But in reality, you need to get asked in like September or October so that they can think about it, they can go back and forth. And when decision is made in November, you already put your information in. And remember, you said the glass ceiling, the, the, the mindset directly into your manager's mind before he was able to make a decision. Okay. And then there's something else. What I, what I did personally was that I started few months before September, right? So in the summer, I, when I felt like I had all the credibility, reputation ready, I started a conversation with the manager even in the summer. So I understand what's missing, how to improve it. And in September, I will officially ask it. And now in November, when they make decision, they know they already have the number ready. And then finally, by the end of like performance review, I already get the numbers I wanted. That's how I got my first 15% raise was in the same company. And I also get 20% uh, a second highest bonus was in my company as well. Okay, so that's what's going on. And next slide, I think I am the host right now. Maybe we can switch directly. Do you want you stop sharing? Um, yes, sorry guys, let me switch sharing. Now, let me share with you Michael's example. And, oh, sorry, present, sorry guys. Okay, cool. All right, so one last uh, tips I wanna give to all of you guys is that this is how rich people become richer. Investing in yourself is the only thing with guaranteed return. Uh, Michael was actually one of my students who asked me to help him to become a product manager. So when Michael reached out to me earlier this year, I was a little bit shocked. I was like, Ew, you know what, Michael, you are very experienced and I'm a minority, I'm a woman. And to be honest, when he reached out to me, he said, I already doubled mine. I was very shocked. I was like, you already doubled mine, Sari? Why you even reach out to me, ask me to teach you? Um, what I learned was also the biggest learning I want to share with all of you guys. Without me teaching others, I wasn't able to discover this, this truth. That's how rich people become richer. So rich people really love to invest in themselves because to them, knowledge is investment. And then they are turning the knowledge to increase their value, their capability to get, in, uh, to get into higher position, to get paid more. That's why when Michael come, came to me, I asked also, question why he came to me he was like Nancy you're very good at selling yourself and you have lots of experience as a product manager and you know how to go to higher salary and you get promoted much faster than most Americans I want to learn all the top skills from you so that I can get paid like three times more so okay that's that's very ambitious goal right so but that's a pattern I see this again and again in lots of students I teach that's how rich people become richer because they see invest in themselves it's the only thing with guaranteed return. So I want you guys to really remember this message. If you don't remember anything of today's talk, you got to remember this one, most important thing. 
Now, uh, let me just encourage everyone again and um, feel free to share this message. If you think the content I teach you tonight need to be heard by anyone else will uh, help someone else start to get paid more and, and start to build confidence in terms of how to stand up for themselves and get uh, paid the right amount and feel free to share this content with anybody else who really needs uh, any help. And all the, the replay of this talk is also going to be on my YouTube channel. And I myself also have a negotiation uh, uh, consulting service, so I can help you to negotiate a higher salary, and I charge you ten percent of the gain. Um, the first five thousand dollars is free. And myself, because I teach, actually, my main thing is I teach product manager accelerator. I help people to become product manager in tech industry. If you're interested, you can get ten dollars off using the code negotiation, and go to my website, Doctor Nancy Lee, to learn more. Um, this is my contact information, so feel free to contact me. Take a screenshot. Um, go. To to my WeChat account or my email, Dr. Nancy Lee YouTube channel. Feel free to take a screenshot and let's get connected later on. I also have a group, uh, actually two groups, LinkedIn group for mock interview and also the product manager referral groups. And I do uh, referrals for free for people. Feel free to join these groups as well. So you can take a screenshot and let's get connected later on and join the group. And finally, I have one last story I want to share with all of you guys is that do you remember at the very beginning, I told you guys, my first company intentionally delayed my green card and it took me 11 years to get a green card. I got my green card in September 2020, like two months ago. But the message I want to deliver to all of you guys is that most people overestimate what they can accomplish in a year. They underestimate what they can accomplish in a decade. So I encourage all of you guys to set a very clear goal regarding where you want to go and use the best strategy to accelerate and get to your goal very fast. Um, so again, at the end, if you think anybody wants to need to hear my stories and all this knowledge I share, feel free to send them my YouTube video to them. Actually, this is this is a YouTube video on my website where I talk about my experience and the lesson learned regarding getting a green card after 11 years. Okay, now let me turn this back to our host. And I also know Helen is going to speak right after me. It's going to be a great Q&A session. I'm going to stay around just in case there's any questions um, you want to ask me. But, but next session is our star, Helen. I'm going to turn it back to them right now. Yeah, thank you very much, Nancy, for the um, informative and uh, refreshing presentation. I believe uh, uh, everyone uh, must have learned a lot from your presentation. Uh, and just a heads up for everyone here, uh, because this session is broadcasted on uh, Dr. Nancy's YouTube channel. So uh, if you would like to revisit uh, this uh, presentation, uh, you could go to Dr. Nancy Lee's YouTube channel later on, and this uh, video will be uploaded to her channel.